Hello, this is the first lecture in Momentum, which is our new topic, and it corresponds to pages 308 and 309 in the textbook if you want to do some additional reading. So our objectives for this lesson is that you'll be able to calculate the momentum of an object, identify the units of momentum, and calculate the momentum of a physical system consisting of multiple objects moving in different directions. These are very straightforward. You'll have no problems doing it. So we only have one physics term, and the term is momentum. And we only have one equation. The equation is P is equal to M times V. So we have a new variable. P is the variable for momentum. And it's a lowercase p because uppercase p is pressure. So lowercase p is momentum. Um, M is our usual mass and is measured in kilograms and V is our usual velocity, and it is measured in meters per second. So this is the definition of momentum. It is the mass of an object multiplied by its velocity, and something that's really important to keep in mind is that momentum is a vector because velocity is a vector, and what that means is that the direction matters. Okay. So what does momentum actually mean? How is the word used in everyday life? Can you think of an example of something that has momentum? And think about how like someone might use momentum in a sentence versus how a physicist might use momentum. So consider these two objects. Um, I've got a one kilogram sphere that's moving at 100 meters per second and a 100 kilogram sphere that's moving at one meter per second. So I've got these two different spheres, one kilogram, 100 meters per second, 100 kilograms, one meter per second. Okay, the same stopping force is applied to each. Which sphere will stop first? And the answer is it's a tie. So why do you think it's a tie? So the reason it's a tie is because they both have the same momentum. I think that's on my, yep, that's on my next slide. Um, they both have the same momentum. And so momentum is the product of mass and velocity and when Newton, Newton was the first one who came up with this idea, he said momentum was originally idea identified with the persistence of motion. So it's similar to inertia, but it's different. Okay, so persistence of motion is momentum. And so if we look at each object, the little sphere has one times 100 or 100 kilograms per meter second. The big sphere has a hundred kilogram times one meter per second, or also a hundred kilogram meters per second. And so they both have the same momentum. And so if you apply an equal force to stop them, or they both have the same persistence of motion. And so if you have an equal stopping force, they are going to stop in the same amount of time. Okay, a red truck and a blue truck have the same mass. The red truck is parked, and the blue truck is traveling along the highway at 60 mile, meters, uh, miles per hour. So A, do both trucks have inertia? And do both trucks have momentum? So they both have inertia because anything with mass has inertia. Mass is a measure of inertia, and so if something has mass, it has inertia. So that's a resistance to a change in motion. Do both trucks have the same momentum? And the answer to that one is no. The blue truck has momentum because it's moving. The red truck has no momentum because it has zero velocity. And so again, we go back to this idea that momentum is persistence of motion. If an object is not moving, it has no motion to persist and so there is no persistence of motion. So both have inertia because both are made of mass, but only the blue truck has momentum. 
All right, the units of momentum you've already looked at. This does not have like a combined unit. It's simply kilogram meter per second. Okay, that's all it is, nothing fancy. So you can, there is an interactive calculator on page 308 for doing this next set of exercises, but I would strongly recommend that you use your calculator just so you can use your calculator because you'll need your calculator for quizzes. Um, and it's a really straightforward calculation. Okay, so we're gonna calculate what is the momentum. Oh, I should say the only thing that's kind of cool about the simulator is that um, it actually is a simulator. So when you put in numbers, the objects move. So you might enjoy that. Nothing like a video game, but hey, it's more interesting than a calculator. All right, so what is the momentum of a 60 kilogram sprinter running at seven meters per second? So when you calculate that, you have, um, it's pretty straightforward. You have 60 kilograms times seven meters per second, and that gives you 420 kilogram meters per second. I guess I should put down the formula. Okay, so straightforward. All right, what is the velocity of the sprint sprinter if her momentum is 270 kilogram meters per second? So I'm giving you momentum, and we know that the sprinter is 60 kilograms, so what's the velocity? And that is 4.5 meters per second. How do you get that one? Well, we're solving for velocity, so I've got P is M times V, so I'll divide both sides by M, so I got P divided by M is equal to V. I know the momentum is 270 kilogram meters per second. The mass is 60 kilograms, and so when I divide that, I get 4.5 meters per second. Okay. All right, if she wanted to double her momentum, how fast would she have to run? So she wants to double her momentum. So two ways of thinking about that. Um, because this is linear, I've got P equals MV. If she is multiplying this by two, mass is staying the same, that means the velocity has to double. The other option is you can um, just do a calculation. So I want two times 270 kilogram meters per second. So that's double my momentum divided by the mass, which is 60 kilograms. And when I calculate that, that will give me nine meters per second. Okay, a 2,000 kilogram car and a 4,000 kilogram truck are both traveling at 10 meters per second when they hit the wall, which has more momentum before impact. Okay, the truck, why? Because it has greater mass. I can show you the calculation. So we've got M times V. So for the car, I've got 2,000 kilograms times 10 meters per second. Um, for the truck, I've got 4,000 kilograms times 10 meters per second. I don't even need to, to do the calculation. I can just tell, label this truck. Truck is a bigger number. It's gonna have more momentum. Okay, so what is the ratio of their momentum? So now we can calculate it if you want to. I know that this is 20,000 kilogram meters per second. This is 40,000 kilogram meters per second. So the ratio, the truck is twice as big as the car. Um, if we do P truck to P car, that is equal to two to one. All right, okay. Um, a boulder is dropped from rest and hits the ground at a speed of 15 meters per second, transferring 1200 kilogram meters per second of momentum to the earth. What is its mass? And so I solve again, if I start with P is equal to M 
times v, and I divide both sides by v. This is the equation I come up with when I rearrange. I substitute in my numbers, and I got 80 kilograms. Create two objects with a momentum of 100 kilogram meters per second, but with masses of one kilogram and four kilograms. Okay, so in order to do that, oh, I should ask the other question. If the mass is four times greater, how does the velocity change? All right, so we've got for the first one, um, we are just going to, um, we know that we want this, uh, the momentum to be 100. The mass is one, and so one times 100 gives me 100. And then if my mass is four, four times 25 is equal to 100. And so those are the velocities in order to give me a particular momentum. Um, so here we can see that the mass is four times greater and so the velocity is one fourth because these are when you look at this those are linear relationships okay what do you think will happen if you enter a negative momentum so if negative momentum um, again if you want to go to the simulator on page 308 i believe 308 or 309 um, you can put in the numbers see what happens to the car but tell me what do you think will happen and the car goes the other way um, remember we said that momentum is a vector um, this negative sign indicates whether the car is going that way or that way okay so the sign of momentum tells you what direction it's going. Momentum is a vector, and so that is really important. Okay, so for one-dimensional motion, that means the direction of the motion is determined by the sign. So negative sign to the left is our usual convention, not always. Positive means it's moving to the right. Okay, so what is the total momentum of this system of two balls? zero because I've got a hundred plus negative a hundred and that is equal to zero. Now it doesn't mean the, the balls are both moving but if I think of the system as two balls that system is stationary. All right let's do some assessment. Calculate the momentum of a one kilogram object moving with a velocity of 20 meters per second. And so that's going to give me um, Mass times velocity is momentum. What is the velocity of an object that has a momentum of negative 30 kilogram meters per second and a mass of three kilograms? Okay, so again, I'm gonna solve this. Um, divide both sides by M. And so I'm going to have V is equal to P over M. So I got negative 30 kilogram meters per second over 3 kilograms. And that gives me negative 10 meters per second. The negative is important. Two objects have equal momentum, but one has four times the mass of the other. What is the relationship between their velocities? Okay, equal momentum, four times the mass. What's the relationship of the velocities? We've already done this one. Hopefully you remember. Okay, so we know the lighter object is four times faster. All right, which answer below shows the correct units for momentum? Hopefully that's not a hard one. Let's see. Lastly, two bowling balls each have a mass of four kilograms. The red ball is moving east at two meters per second. I highly recommend... Um, Kind of making annotated pictures so i've got m is four kilograms m is four kilograms this is two meters per second and that is one meter per second calculate the total momentum of the system so what do i need to do first and the momentum i need to calculate the momentum of each ball so what is the momentum of each ball 
All right, so I just multiply. I know that um, four kilograms times two meters per second, the plus is for yeast, gives me plus eight kilogram meters per second. And then the blue ball is four kilograms and then um, negative, so moving west at one meter per second, that gives me that. Okay, so I've calculated the mass of each ball. Now calculate the total momentum of the system. And I add those together and I get plus four meters. So when they crash, the, what will happen is the blue ball will go this way, ricochet, bounce, whatever, turn to the right, red ball will go that way so that the total momentum is this. All right, so for your practice, you want to complete the assignments that are posted on Canvas, which there's a worksheet and I believe a positive physics assignment.